Well, good morning and welcome to Matins on this Friday of the 22nd week after Pentecost. Thanks for being with me today. Um, the scriptures we're using are Psalm number 88. We're going to finish Jeremiah chapter 38, and we're going to move into 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's, uh, let's begin, though, with a word of prayer. Please pray with me. Bless us, O God, with a reverent sense of your presence, that we may be at peace and may worship you with all our mind and spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. Hallelujah. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands have molded the dry land. O come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. And come, let us worship him. Alleluia. Okay, so our psalm is number 88. O Lord, my God, my Savior, by day and night I cry to you. Let my prayer enter into your presence. Incline your ear to my lamentation. For I am full of trouble. My life is at the brink of the grave. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I have become like one who has no strength lost among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. You have laid me in the depths of the pit, in dark places and in the abyss. Your anger weighs upon me heavily, and all your great waves overwhelm me. You've put my friends far from me. You have made me to be abhorred by them. I'm in prison and cannot get free. My sight has failed me because of trouble. Lord, I have called upon you daily. I have stretched out my hands to you. Do you work wonders for the dead? Will those who have died stand up and give you thanks? Will your loving kindness be declared in the grave, your faithfulness in the land of destruction? Will your wonders be known in the dark or your righteousness in the country where all is forgotten? But as for me, O Lord, I cry to you for help. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. Lord, why have you rejected me? Why have you hidden your face from me? Ever since my youth, I have been wretched and at the point of death. I have borne your terrors with a troubled mind. Your blazing anger has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. They surround me all day long like a flood. They encompass me on every side. My friend and my neighbor you have put away from me, and darkness is my only companion. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, author of our salvation and redeemer of all, for us you descended to the dead and broke the grip of death. Hear the prayers of your family and lift us from our slavery and evil, that we may be set free to see your Father's glory now and forever. Amen. All right. So our first reading, we continue in Jeremiah, we're in chapter 38, and we're going to read verses 14 to 28. King Zedekiah sent for Jeremiah the prophet and received him at the third entrance of the temple of the Lord. The king said to Jeremiah, I will ask you a question. Hide nothing from me. Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, if I tell you, will you not surely put me to death? And if I give you counsel, you will not listen to me. Then King Zedekiah swore secretly to Jeremiah, 
as the Lord lives, who made our souls. I will not put you to death or deliver you into the hand of these men who seek your life. Then Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, If you will surrender to the officials of the king of Babylon, then your life shall be spared, and this city shall not be burned with fire, and you and your house shall live. But if you do not surrender to the officials of the king of Babylon, then this city shall be given into the hand of the Chaldeans, and they shall burn it with fire, and you shall not escape from their hand. King Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Judeans who have deserted to the Chaldeans, lest I be handed over to them, and they deal cruelly with me. Jeremiah said, You shall not be given to them. Obey now the voice of the Lord and what I say to you, and it shall be well with you, and your life shall be spared. But if you refuse to surrender, this is the vision which the Lord has shown me. Behold, all the women left in the house of the king of Judah were being led out to the officials of the king of Babylon, and were saying, Your trusted friends have deceived you and prevailed against you. Now that your feet are sunk in the mud, that they turn away from you. All your wives and your sons shall be led out to the Chaldeans, and you yourself shall not escape from their hand, but shall be seized by the king of Babylon, and this city shall be burned with fire. Then Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, let no one know of these words, and you shall not die. If the officials hear that I have spoken with you, and come to you, and say to you, Tell us what you said to the king, and what the king said to you. Hide nothing from us, and we will not put you to death. Then you shall say to them, I made a humble plea to the king, that he would not send me back to the house of Jonathan to die there. Then all the officials came to Jeremiah and asked him, and he answered them as the king had instructed him. So they stopped speaking with him, for the conversation had not been overheard. And Jeremiah remained in the court of the guard until the day that Jerusalem was taken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, so yesterday we read about how these people that wanted Jeremiah dead seized him and threw him in a cistern and he sunk in the mud. And this Ethiopian, Ebed Melech, rescued him with a rope and rags, right? Um, wanted to save his life. So um, so he begged, begged the king to spare Jeremiah. So he did. And that was where he left off yesterday. So now that Jeremiah has been saved again, the king wants to talk to him again and hear what God's, what God's plan is. Said, don't hide anything from me all right tell me everything i want to hear the truth no matter how ugly jeremiah says i'm going to tell you you're going to kill me and i'm going to i'm going to give you i'm going to give you advice and you're not going to take it <laughs> you see why we call jeremiah the weeping prophet so zedekiah swore secretly to him I will not put you to death or give you over to the hands of those who would take your life. So, so it says here, the king is racked by indecision. So he turns again to Jeremiah, hoping of a last minute escape that God might have for him. Right. Um, so Jeremiah tells him, if you obey God and surrender, you'll be spared. You and your family, you and your house will be spared. If you don't surrender, you're going to be conquered and the city will be destroyed and you will likely be killed, right? <laughs> you shall not escape from their hand. So there's no, there's no way around this. The city is going to be taken. You can stay alive or you can be killed. Which do you want? Now, he has a legitimate concern here. There are, there are, Israelites who have already deserted, they they surrendered. Um, and if they get a hold of this defeated king, Zedekiah, they might be cruel to him. And that's legitimate. That's a very strong possibility. If you obey the voice of the Lord, it shall be well with you and your life will be spared. You won't be given to them. 
But if you refuse to surrender, all the women left in your house are being taken to the king of Babylon. Your trusted friends have deceived you, right? Um, now that your feet are sunk in the mud, they turn away from you. So this is him hearing. He's, yeah. This is Jeremiah, right? Sunk in the mud. He hears the women of the king's court taunting him, mockingly lamenting the fact that he had trusted his friends, that his trusted friends left him in the lurch, right? Uh, all your wives and sons will be taken out. You will not escape. You'll be seized. The city will be burned with fire. So the king makes him, hey, don't tell anybody else about this. If you, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then you will be protected, right? I'll protect you. If you keep these words secret, I'll protect you. And if and when they come and say to you, tell us what you two, you and the king talked about, um, here's here's how to answer them. I just made a humble plea with the king not to die there. And so they, that's exactly what happened. They asked him, he did what the king said. Um, so they left him alone because they didn't, that's all they had to go by. So now you can see what happens next. Fall of Jerusalem. Nebuchadnezzar came against Jerusalem and besieged it. We're not going to read this tomorrow. Um, we're going to jump ahead to Jeremiah chapter 52, actually. So if you want to read about the fall of Jerusalem, I would encourage you to do so. But that's what happens next. Um, so, um, yeah. <laughs> Even in complete, the complete conquer of the city of Jerusalem and the capture of the king, even there, you can see grace, right? God's grace is there. You'll be spared. It, if you obey the word of the Lord, right? It shall be well with you. If you obey the, the voice of the Lord, it shall be well with you. Hmm. That might apply to more than just King Zedekiah, I think. So anyway. All right, let's move into First Corinthians. Uh, we're in chapter 15. We're going to read the first 11 verses of this chapter. St. Paul writes, Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain, for I delivered to you, as of first importance, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least. I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I was because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach. And so you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. I think at this point now, Paul has pretty much addressed most of the conflict in the church at Corinth. And so now he's going back to the most important thing about this church, and that's the gospel. And if you're ever looking for, if somebody asks you what the gospel is, it's this right here. Verses... Uh, three through um that actually really just three and four right we could continue to five and six but three and four are the gospel itself that's the core of the gospel it's a good summary um and it is it is it is both jesus death and resurrection 
and that his death was for our sins. Um, so he's bringing them back to that. I would, I'm going to remind you of the gospel I preached to you. You received it, right? I brought it to you. You received it. You stand in it now. You are a church because of this gospel. And it is this gospel by which you are being saved. Notice it's an ongoing process, right? You are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain, okay? If you, if you believe it, you will be saved, right? This is part of the requirements of salvation. To be baptized and believe the gospel. Mark 16. So, um, what is this word? This is this is what I'm, I'm reminding you of this, right? Because of, you seem to have lost some of the focus as evidenced in the divisions within the church, okay? We've been talking about all these divisions, and I'm trying to correct each one of those, Paul says. Now, now that I've addressed each one of those issues, let me remind you of why we're doing what we're doing. I brought this gospel to you. It is what is saving you. And you need to hold fast to the word that you heard. What is that word? Well, that's this, right? As of, I brought to you, I delivered to you as a first importance what I received. Paul also had to receive the gospel. Christ died for our sins. And this is, this is big in accordance with the scriptures, right? We say that in, in our creed, don't we? In accordance with the scriptures. This was God's plan. He foretold it, and it happened the way he said it would. So the Messiah, the Christ, right? Christ is the Greek word for Messiah, means anointed one. <laughs> Christ died for our sins, as he was foretold to do. And they buried him because he was dead. And then he was raised from the dead on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. What scriptures? Well, Psalm 16, Isaiah 53, okay? Isaiah 53 is a suffering servant. Um, there's more about Christ dying for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. Dying for our sins, again, Isaiah 53, Daniel 9, Zechariah 13, okay? The, these... This dying and being raised on the third day was prophesied, okay? And after he was raised, he then appeared to his followers, first to Cephas, it's Peter, right? And to the, then to the whole group of them, right? Then he appeared to a large group, right? This was in Acts, right? And most of them are still alive by the time Paul writes this, although some have fallen asleep, this is Paul's words for they've died, okay? They appear to James. Um, this is one of Jesus' brothers, actual, grew up with, with Jesus, okay? And then to all the apostles. And last, he appeared to Paul, right? Paul was brought into the circle as an apostle, although he was not sitting at Jesus' feet for three years, listening to his teachings, he was there. He was he was called by Christ. And Paul says, I'm the least of them. I'm unworthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church. If Jesus had not intervened, Paul would have hunted down and probably had all these apostles arrested. That was what he that was the work he was doing. By the grace of God I am what I am now, an apostle. He called personally by Jesus Christ through personal revelation. He heard and saw the ascended Christ. Okay. And his grace toward Paul was not in vain. You know, Paul is living in constant thanksgiving for what Jesus has done for him, saving him. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them. <laughs> uh that's kind of a kind of a bold statement but um but he says this it, it was not me doing it it was god the grace of god that is with me he is he is only able to do what he do what he do, does and did by god's grace and the holy spirit at work in him 
but whatever, whether it was whether it was me or the 12, all of us are preaching the same gospel. And it is that gospel that you believe. That is why you are a church. And that is what drives what we do. That is why we uh, feed the hungry and clothe the naked and and help the poor, right? Mm. This is this is what the gospel calls us to. All right. We'll pick up there tomorrow. Let's conclude our liturgy. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant, David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, thou art untamed and perilous, who dost deal in every form of danger and many modes of death. Strip us of our pretensions and our vanities. Expose to the strong his weakness and to the wise his folly, but set in our hearts an unconquerable hope and in thine own way fulfill it. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome in adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now the almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. And that concludes our matins for this Friday. Thank you for spending this time in the Word with me. And thank you for giving back to God a little bit of the day he's given to you. Um, hope you're staying warm in these cold temperatures. I'm certainly doing my best. Um, anyway, so uh, let's see. I'm expecting to be able to do suffrages tomorrow. And then Sunday is All Saints Day. So I uh, hope you can be there for that as we remember our brothers and sisters who've joined the church triumphant since this time last year. So again, I wish you a blessed day. Thanks for being here. And until we can be together again, whenever that is, may God bless and keep you.